Hey Luke here with CaptainCarp.com and we're catching carp in the summer and I'm going to show you all the tips and tricks to do it too. All right, Nathan, you ready to get out? Let's go fishing. All right, bud. Hey, why don't you get on in the boat? All right, we're doing some carp fishing today and we're doing it from the boat, which I haven't done in a while. So let's, come on. All right, engine's going. Let's go see if we can find some carp now. It is hot, and I say hot, I'm being serious, man. It's in the 90s, and the water temperature at the surface is like 94 degrees. It's ridiculously hot. And, uh, but it's about 6 p.m., and we're gonna see if we can't get it to, get into some fish once it starts to cool off and the sun starts to go down a little bit, all right? Ooh, it is hot, kids, it is hot. Nathan, you excited to go fishing? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm glad. 96 degrees, that's insane. Man, this is so stinking hot. So we've got about seven feet of water here and then it quickly drops down to about 20 feet. So let's see how that does. To keep my boat completely stationary in the water, I do a two anchor system. I throw a 28 pound anchor off the front, then reverse the boat back up, stretching out 100 feet of rope. Then I throw another 28 pound anchor off the back attached to about 60 feet of rope. And then I pull in the front rope until the back rope is tight and I tie it off. All right, so let me show you what we're gonna be using as bait today. I've got some of these panko bread crumbs, some strawberry jello, and some whole kernel corn. Okay, so we're gonna start off opening up the bread crumbs. Now put them in a box. Okay, then I'm gonna take some jello. Mix that in. Okay. Gonna drain, drain off the juice. There we go. Nice. All right, so this is the rig I'm using. This is a method lead, about a 40 gram method lead. You can see it's got lead on the bottom and these ribs on the top. And it's designed, so you take a little bit of bait and you jam it in there. And it squishes right in. Okay. Okay, get this ball of chum there, and then you have this hook, and you can stick it right in there like that. Okay? Then when it hits the water, it'll break down and dissolve, and the carp come up and suck it up. Now I've got a, a hair rig here. You see how you got a plastic piece of corn attached to the hair, not the hook. I'm gonna take some of this Mega Tutta Fruity flavor from Rod Hutchinson. It's a carp bait company, and I am going to dip it down in there, okay? Yeah, and I'm gonna take and just, whoo, put a little bit on there. Give it some extra flavor. Oh, that's powerful, you can smell that. And there we go, we're ready to cast out. So check this out, on this hair rig, I'm missing one of my fake corns. And I forgot to bring my, my baiting needle and all my 
stuff for putting the fake corn on there so I just put a whole bunch of real corn on the hook it doesn't work as good but it can still catch a fish in certain places so oh uh, if you don't have baiting needles and fake corn don't be intimidated you can still just put corn on a hook and go get get carp Nathan, are you eating my bait again? No. Oh, Nathan. <laughs> you are eating my bait. No. Yeah. It's all over your mouth. Oh, don't eat the bait, Nathan. Don't eat the bait. All right, so let me show you where I'm casting. Over here, I'm at about four feet of water. And I picked this spot because it's a nice shady cove. There's a lot of vegetation along the sides, overhanging trees, real carp area. Uh, so I definitely got some good vibes about that, but it's a little bit shallow and I think in this hot weather They might be a little deeper here. I've got one right up near that point about 10 15 point feet from that point I've got this one out dead ahead about halfway between here and the shore. I've got this one uh, Just about seven eight feet of water left of this log And I've got this one out way deep. It's in about 16 feet of water on a shelf so I've got kind of the whole different depths. We'll see where at which depth they're at. All right, so for all of you who think I'm just the ideal dad because we go out fishing and it's perfect every time and it's so cute. Okay, Tommy hates my guts because I told him not to touch the sunscreen or the spray. Nathan keeps eating the bait and is upset at me because I told him not to eat the bait and took the bait away. So... It's 90 something degrees and all my kids hate me. <laughs> uh, it happens. There's a bit of bubbles I've been seeing right there. Little bits of bubbles. Uh, that's often a sign of carp feeding on the bottom because when they feed on the bottom, this really loose sediment, sometimes it kicks up bubbles. And I've been watching it move. And that's how you tell the difference between just bubbles escaping naturally in a carp is the, the stream of bubbles, which I can see right there, started off really close to my line, and then it's meandered back and forth and gradually further away. And that's what it'll do. If it's a carp, it'll slowly, that bubble trail will slowly move away. So there's probably a carp right there feeding. Now I don't want to cast right on top of him because that'll spook him, but you try to predict kind of where he's going and cast in front of him. I got fish. You want to see the fish? Sideshow Goo, John Campbell. I put out scissors and paper. Oh, wow. I found out. I died. Oh, look at that. Oh, two of them. Two of them. Nathan, here we go. Oh, that one just went. Oh, wait, hold on. Nathan, get the fish. Come here. Fish. Okay, no one wants to reel in the fish. He's so fast, Oh, watch out, he's gonna get you. He's blessed. Ah! Ah! Carp attack! Wow. Hey, the fish swam me, just blessed me. Little sun splash. There we go. There we go. That's see that's proper fish care. When you lose the fish before you even get them on the boat, that's that's the that's the best there. <laughs> Was that fun? Yeah. Did you see that? Did you see the fish? He was big. Yeah. He likes those hooks. All right. Let's get rebaited and get some more. All right. So I just got two solid hits, both in about seven to eight feet of water. So that's important. Okay. I want to know what depth the fish are hanging out at, and that's more important to me than than where in this landscape they're hanging out. Okay, I, I wanna know the depth. So if they're hanging out here at seven feet and they're hanging out way over there at seven feet, they're probably also hanging out way over there at seven feet and way over there, you know, so I gotta match the depth. So I might be moving some of my rods around trying to get more rods at about seven to eight feet of water. Come on. I'm wet, so I'm okay. going. Hold on, let's see, is this one right here? See that one right there? What? Oh, it was it was bouncing up and down so crazy. 
Oh, well, go grab it. Why don't you, why don't you go and... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Go ahead and reel it, reel it up a little bit. Go, go, go get it, get it, Nathan. Get it, Tommy, get it. He's on? Yeah, he's a crazy one. He's acting all crazy. I'm not sure that's a car. Oh, wait, it's done now. It's oh, done. hold on, don't take him out of the water. Oh, he's soft. Oh, oh, you pulled him out of the water and that knocked him off, but that's okay, it was a little catfish. Sitting in a life vest upright like Tommy does takes a little bit of practice. Nathan's not super good at it. When he gets in the water, he kind of panics and he can't keep his head upside right. right. Oh, that's like me. And so learning, learning how to how to swim with the life vest on takes a little time. And Tommy's got it down, but Nathan does it. And really, the only way Tommy learned was just by spending time in the water. Oh. It is hot out here. Man, I kind of envy the kids. I am going full-blown mammal on this shirt. Okay, I can see a whole bunch of bubbles right there by my hook. Oh, well, look at that, I just got a hit over there. Oh, over here. Got one over here. Surprise, surprise. Guys, there's a fish. Watch out, there's a fish gonna bite you. Oh man, he is snagged up. Oh, pop, there he goes. Uh, he was all snagged up. I gotta get serious. These kids, these kids wanna swim, they don't wanna fish, and I gotta get serious on this. Oh, is that snagged up too? Oh, you're kidding. There we go. Oh my goodness, there's a lot more snags in this spot than I realized. Oh. I don't know if you can see this, but I just lost my rig in another snag. And look at the end of the line. Always inspect the end of your line. If the knot fails, if the knot slips on you, when the end comes back, it'll be all curly cued, like a piggy's tail. If it gets broken on a snag or a nick or cut, it'll come back clean like that. So that'll always tell you whether or not it was your knot that let you down. Ba 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 <laughs> Yay! Hey, come here, guys. Come here. There you go. There you go, Nathan. Yay, carp fishing! Well, the sun set. It's no longer blistering hot. I've had three fish on. I lost two in snags. And it's time to get me some new rigs. I've, I'm I'm down several rigs, and also I've been having these same hooks and method leads on since early 2016. So after about a year of service, it's time to retire these hooks and make up some new rigs. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to do it, right? I'm going to teach you a little bit about how to tie your own rigs, because there's no reason why you couldn't tie these exact same rigs at home. I was going to include a tutorial on how to tie my favorite carp rig in this video. But it made the video a little bit long, so I'm going to cut it up into a separate video and post it next Wednesday. And I'll put a link in the description of this video so you guys can click to it and learn how to tie my favorite carp rig. All right, well, it's day two. And I've got a bunch of fresh rigs. I've got the rods rigged up. And we are ready to go catch some carp. All right, let's go get them. Here we go. Whoa. Come on, get up. Stay out of those snacks. There you go, a little channel catfish. Man, if you want to learn how to catch channel catfish, learn how to catch carp. I catch more and better channel catfish, carp fishing than just about anything else. Look at that. Call me the Zion! Thank <laughs> you. 
Hey Nathan, high five. Good net job. I have a bite. Yeah, Mr. Kitty likes the likes the jello and corn. Alright. Look at that. Another another big old channel cat. And catch a lot of nice catfish carp fishing. Another beautiful carp. So, been here about an hour and we've got uh, two nice channel catfish and two carp. Wonderful day. What a great way to spend a weekday afternoon unwinding after work. Hold the net. Can you hold the net, Nathan? Oh. Now you notice I'm uh, I'm kneeling on this thing. It's called an unhooking mat. If you're going to be catching big fish, whether it's catfish or carp, um, they can thrash around and hurt themselves a lot on the bottom of the boat. So just having something moderately softer and wet to put them on is a nice a nice little uh, way to keep the fish in a little bit better condition. If you're not going to be eating them, put them back in good shape. Here we go. Whoa. Well, it's another beautiful day. Caught some nice fish and it's time to go home. Gonna get these little boys all cleaned up and to bed. Oh, did you find a frog? I got a frog. Oh, you are a great frog catcher there, Nathan. Here, Nathan, let him go. Time to let him go, okay? Why don't you come over here and put him in the grass where he can get he can be free? Yeah, why don't you put him in the grass? That'll work. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something new. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to click subscribe. We put out new videos every week.